Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today is what you've been waiting for, how to mix action perk. Let's do it. Now hopefully I've written my drum parts in such a way that they do complement each other, and that's drum choice, that's patterns, etc. We're gonna take things a step further now. We're gonna use stuff like EQ, compression, panning, and reverb to give the drums even more clarity and space. Now, uh, for those of you that wanna review on the basic plugins that we're gonna use, I'm gonna do that now before we dive into the actual mix. Uh, for those of you that don't need that, skip down to that section now. The rest of us will wait here. Okay. Now I've already shown you a bit of transient shaping in a previous video, and we were using the Kilohertz Transient Shaper. In uh, this video, uh, we're going to mostly use the Cubase stock envelope shaper. Now, you can use envelope shapers to modify the transient of a sound and give it more or less punch and sustain. Most sample playback engines offer some sort of envelope shaping, uh, but you know, using a dedicated plugin can sometimes offer a little more control than that. Now, real quickly, when I'm talking about envelope, that's the shape of the sound over time. That's divided into four things. It's the attack, decay, sustain, and release, also known as ADSR. It's something you often see on keyboards, like my little Moog grandmother back here behind me. Attack is how long it takes for the sound to go from nothing to maximum volume. Decay is then how long it takes to go from that maximum down to the sustain, which is just the part where it's held. And then the release is when you release the note and it dies away back to nothing. Okay, first let's look at the envelope inside a sample engine. In this case, the sign player, we're gonna use the uh, Holkenberg percussion. Now down here is a little tab marked envelope. And as you can see, I can adjust the attack and the release. Shorten the release or long. Now I can also make the attack longer. So pretty straightforward. And I'll show you how an envelope shaper will take this one step further. Okay, compressors. All they do is reduce the dynamic range of a sound, meaning it makes the difference between the softest sound and the loudest sound less, right? Uh, the way they work is uh, you set a threshold where any sound past that certain threshold, the compressor will take that and make it a little bit quieter, right? It makes for a more even performance. EQ, now I think we all know the basics of that. We've all seen EQ on a stereo system. What we're gonna do though is target specific parts of an instrument's frequency spectrum that we want to accentuate. And then other parts, we're gonna target those to reduce and we're gonna carve it, right? So we're gonna carve one instrument one way, carve another instrument another way so that they all kind of fit together like a puzzle piece. Now, this is an important part of the process. It's different than working with a full, just live orchestra, everybody in the same room. Uh, we can actually get in there and sculpt each instrument in such a way that we can create a much more uh, exciting sounding performance and a more exciting sounding mix for that matter. Okay, whether you skipped down or you sat through it, welcome to this part of the video. We're gonna get into the meat of things. Okay, let's start with the bass drum. Uh, we're gonna solo that. I'll bring up the three plugins I used, in this case, an envelope shaper, an EQ, and some compression. Now I'm gonna play this first with everybody turned off. You can see that uh, the bass drum has got a pretty wide frequency range, but it does kind of have, you know, a fundamental. So what I did first was bring in an envelope shaper to give it a little more snap, but I also raised the release up a little bit. I wanted the uh, ring out to go a little longer because I want that boominess to be in the subwoofer. And we're gonna show you how I got to the boom in a second. Now let's switch to the EQ. I'll bring in each of these adjustments one at a time. Now I'm adding a fair amount of low end here because I really want you to feel this on the sub and then I'm dipping the frequencies just above that.
it'll make more sense when I get to the Tycos, but I'm leaving a little space right here. And this is what I talk about when I was talk about carving space for uh, instruments to fit together like puzzle pieces. Is that I'm going to boost a drum in one spot and dip it here. And then another drum, I'll boost it there and dip it over here. Uh, I do that with the Tycos, and I'll show you that in a sec. Now let me show you how both of these dips sound when I pop them in and out. You can see if I boost the gain. But down here, this range here, I'll show you what that would sound like with it boosted. It's kind of a papery area that I kind of didn't like the sound of. And over here, uh, I was just dipping a little extra the highs. I uh, probably really could have done that by just moving this a little bit, but this is what I did. <laughs> and then I followed that up with a compressor. In this case, just a stock compressor. Now this is just to take a little bit of, uh, even though I added transient earlier on, I'm actually taking a little bit of it back and filling out the sound even more. And it's okay to take compressors and put one after the other. Serial compression is completely okay because you can set compressors to do different things Okay, so that's the basics of the bass drum. Let's listen to it in and out real quick. So clearly a, a marked difference there. It's fuller, it's rounder, it doesn't have the, the sort of papery sound that, you know, uh, that was in there before. And there's nothing wrong with the sample itself. It's a great sample and I actually love it. I use this sample all the time, but you can, you can shape it, especially if you want to have, um, you know, other drums around it. Also something else to keep in mind too, is the timbre of those kind of drums changes radically when you, uh, when you hit it different ways. For instance, a very softly hit bass drum, you will get a lot more of the low end. Whereas a, a bass drum you hit really, really hard, uh, you'll get much more of the transient. Plus, it depends on what kind of mallet you're hitting it with. You can hit it with a hard mallet and get one sound. You can hit it with a big puffy mallet and get completely different sound. So also experiment with, with the mallets, experiment with the uh, velocity, and you can get a lot, of, uh, a lot of difference just from that. We will move on now to the Tyco, first one. Now, let me show you here. Notice uh, that huge peak right down there. That's something very specific about Tycos that I learned from a very good engineer many years ago, is that they have a very distinct fundamental. If you have a bunch of them playing, think about, you know, carving a little bit of that out. And we're going to do that here now. So first of all, first thing I did was bring in an envelope shaper. I added a little more attack and I shortened the release. Let me show you. Let me overdo it so you can really hear it. So you can see what that envelope shaper does there. So I'm kind of tightening up this, the sound of the Tygo, kind of dampening it a little bit so it doesn't ring quite as much. Part of that reason is that I made the bass drum much more ringy and boomy, and so I need to keep this one a little tighter. And then I found that fundamental So dipping a little of the fundamental and then adding a little up here for clarity. And after that, we added a little bit of compression. In this case, the uh, LA-2. Now it's just a tiny bit of compression. It's really just there to 
tame some of the transients that get added by the envelope shaper. And of course, running it through here just gives it a little bit of that analog warmth. Now, going to the next Tyco, I used Smack. Honestly, I'm trying to remember why I switched over. I think I was having a hard time getting it to react in the way I wanted uh, with the stock compressor. So I switched to this Waves one. I made an on the fly decision on here. So as you can see, I dipped down here and that's in the same range as, this is my bass drum from earlier. Now remember when I talked about interlocking the EQs. Now you can see I raised the, uh, this frequency here, 42. In this case, I dipped around 34 and then dipped at 162, kind of raising there, although I ended up dipping a little bit here, but mostly it's, this area down here and then up here in the transients accentuating the parts of the drums that sound good getting rid of the parts of the drums that i don't want and then allowing them to all fit together all right why don't we play all the low perk together real quick and i will turn off the inserts and sends so we can hear it unprocessed and then with the processing on oh by the way the reverb i used here was the medium hall which was the verb that i talk about um in an earlier video that's this guy here berliner hall 1.5 second reverb right so even though percussion would be normally back farther in the room and would have sort of more uh more verb I use a short haul here just because I don't want to, the um, sound to get kind of too roomy sounding. I still need some of that detail. Okay, so let's play this back with just the uh, stuff dry. Inserts on. And sends. That's all sounding pretty good. Let's move on to mid perk. We have the envelope shaper going into Pro Q3, going into the 1176, and then going into the LA2A. So let's turn all those off and just listen to this without any processing. Turn the sends off too. First thing I did was pull in the envelope shaper. Now, in this case, these these toms or certos, whatever sample it is, I can't remember. I'm gonna go for a really, really in your face sound. The rest of the drums, I'm compressing them a little bit, but this drum in particular, this is gonna be really massive, like it's John Bonham playing toms, right? So add more attack and a more release. So let me show you again with it out. And then with some EQ. Now what I did here was this frequency here, 136. Uh, it was starting to build up. I'll show you uh, with that boosted. Over here at uh, 929, it was a harsh sound I wanted to get rid of. Now this drum had some nice presence and clarity up here around 4K. I also added a little low shelf just to slightly attenuate the uh, low end rumble and room tone. Now from the EQ, we'll feed into the 1176 compressor. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm using this guy. This is a very, very fast compressor. Um, I'm using this to now tame some of the transients that get a little too hyped because some of them sound good. Some of them um, are a little too, too spiky. So I'm just catching a few. Notice I'm, the input is very, very low here and it, the meter is only bouncing on a couple of the hits. Lastly, I send that into an LA-2A, which is just to kind of crush it a little bit. So, it gives you a good sense of what the Cerdo is doing. We're going to go to the snares next. Now, I was using snares from two different sample libraries. First one was from Damage, and then the second one is from Cinebrook. Now, the Damage stuff, because uh, both of these sample libraries, the snares were a little on the roomy side. So, the Damage stuff has this nice little mix control right here, so I can bring all the drums right to the forefront. And then with Cineperk, I rebalanced the microphones so I had a little more presence and a little less of the room sound on both of these. Part of that was just I wanted a little more control over the uh, over the raw sound, and then I can add some of that reverb, you know, back in artificially. I'm using a bit of theirs, I'm using a bit of mine. The reverb on board that I'm using is to also tie those two sample libraries together because um, they were recorded in different rooms, so this puts them kind of in the same space. Let's listen to these together and uh, without the inserts and verbs. Come back to one at a time here. Pull up those inserts. In this case, just a bit of EQ. Okay, first I dipped here because it was a little boxy sounding and getting in the way of the Cerdo. Let me show you what that sounds like. That wasn't really a frequency range I was enjoying. So uh, anyway, I also added some top end. That gave me a little more of the stick and a little more of the snare too. It helped it cut through. Everything else is, is a much denser sound. So the snares are kind of a nice timbre that kind of I wanted to accentuate once again. Now with the snares, I did actually apply a low cut rather than a low shelf. There's no usable material down there anyway. So this is a case where low cutting uh, makes sense. Let's uh, move on to the next snare. In this case, I dipped a bit at 172 and I added a little high-end boost. Let me show you that. Adding a similar boost to both snare drums really helps it cut through the mix pretty well. And with that, we'll switch over to the hi-hat. Now let me pull up all three plugins that I used here. The first one was Panman. This is something I use a lot on tickies and hi-hats just because they tend to sit in one spot in the mix and I like things to kind of move around to keep it interesting. Now if you want, you can time this rate to um, match your tempo. I sort of, I tend to like them just to move around. Next up is EQ. Now, as you can see, I did a pretty aggressive low cut to get rid of any other low frequencies. And also this range here, let me show you what that is. It's kind of a trashy sounding frequency. And I just wanted a lot of highs. In fact, I wanted so much high end that I also brought in this little guy, this uh, Oral Exciter. Just enough to kind of, it helps it sit up there way, way on top of the mix. Okay, let me play back the whole mix and uh, I'll pop the inserts and sends on and off to give you a sense of what we're accomplishing.
All right, lastly, let's just put in the string and brass parts so you hear how the whole thing fits together. Okay, so there you go. There is a final product. That's at least uh, how I would take a cue like that and mix it to make it that much more exciting and in your face. Um, I think you can see how some of those choices make the, the uh, percussion more clear. I mean, you can hear all the articulations, all the drums fit together, and the overall mix is uh, much more polished sounding. Uh, your mileage may vary. You might make different choices. You might be uh, going for a different kind of sound or uh, you're using different sample libraries, which will require you to mix them differently. But experiment with what you have at home, uh, whether it's stock plugins or whether it's using some of these cool emulations that I was showing you today. If you're digging these videos, please like, subscribe, hit that notification button so that you know when I've posted a new video. And I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.